Termites! It is me, Mama Termite, as many of you have come to call me, and I'll take it. Um, what are we drinking? Termites, the pub is open! Look what I found at the gas station. How have I made it to this age and never seen this? Corona Familiar. Can you see it? Yes, and then it says, I don't speak Spanish, La Cerveza Mas Fina. <laughs> It just looked, it looks old school. And actually I thought it was a Coors. And it's the same color as the old Coors. I never did like Coors or Coors Light for me. Ugh, it's not my thing, but I thought I would try it. Corona Familiar. Gas station, I think this was about $1.58. Delicious. Delicious, <laughs> from the Speedway, which is also where I got four scratch offs and one fucking nothing. I've really had it. My brother keeps getting scratch offs, winning like 50, 500. His wife won 500. Nothing. So that's what we're drinking. Why do I have this black stainless steel cloth? You're asking, termites? Why are you asking? Because we're going to cover up Fred Bird. Not forever, just for a week. In mourning, the Colton Wong has been traded to the Brewers. <laughs> I have a particular um, love for Colton Wong that I don't think the front office or management of the St. Louis Cardinals has or had. Um, and I know we got the new guy. I will celebrate that later. Arenado. Arenado. Nolan Arenado, that poor guy. All he had to do was press for like, uh, you want, St. Louis is truly a baseball town. I mean, we love hockey, but baseball's the thing. And it's, you know, it's a medium-sized city. So once you're in, you got to be all in. And every radio station, that poor guy had more media Every single thing I turned on Twitter or Instagram, it was Nolan doing another interview. And I thought, this guy probably thinks, what the fuck have I done? <laughs> like, he could have gone to the Padres and no maybe way. one station would call, you know, hey, you're our new guy. This is a religion to these people. Do you like Not, to surf? They don't know that he knew exactly what he was stepping into, but God love him. But Fred Bird's going to remain covered with my stainless steel cleaner cloth. Well, I don't know how long. A week for sure, till next week, maybe two. It makes me sad when I see Colton Wong's post. I do love Milwaukee, however, um, and I don't mind the Brewers as a lifelong enemy of the Cubs. I'm glad he's not a Cub. It would literally tear my soul apart <laughs> because you know he's going he's gonna to fuck us in a good way for him, in a bad way for us, and I'd rather, I'd rather get stabbed by Milwaukee, the Brewers, than the Cubs. But that's just a lifelong thing, and it doesn't mean I don't like Chicago. I love Chicago. But you guys beat us every single year in hockey for the most part of my life. We beat you in baseball. That's how it goes. Football. <laughs> well, let's talk about them bears, huh? Let's talk about Mitchell. Mitchell Trubinsky. What are we going to do with Mitchell? Hmm? Chicago people? Speaking of which, it's Super Bowl Sunday. I have a lot of bets down. I'm really... I mean, I want the Chiefs to win because I'm from Missouri, obviously. Um, but I did a lot of individual player bets. And then my friend, Mike Somerville, he's a comedian. You ever heard of him? He put on Twitter that you, if you bet 10 bucks that Brady will run five, 50 yards or more, you'll win $2,500. So I did that. I don't think it'll happen. I don't know that Tom Brady's ever run 50 yards anywhere, ever, no. ever anywhere. Oh. But how funny would it be if it happened? <laughs> so I have a lot of bets like that. Um, and I bet the under. So we'll see. Under 56. I don't know. Okay, that's enough chitter-chatter about half the stuff people don't even know anything about. Fred Bird is covered. This is my um, uh, bathtub duck from Bucky's. I just thought I'd show it off. <laughs> what? It's my favorite gas station in the whole bathtub world. They're in Texas. If you ever see a Bucky's and you're not familiar with Texas, pull in. I don't care if you're late. It's worth it. They have a Beef, they have a jerky counter, and I really like beef jerky, that's like eight miles long of jerkies. The place is incredible. You could live there for years. I could never leave. That could be my home. I could never leave. <laughs> Speaking of which, which, what are we eating? Well, I don't want to brag, but I have this kind of time because I'm, I'm on the hunt. I'm on a ranch hunt for the best ranch available. I don't care if it's from a fast food place. I don't care if it's at the grocery store. I don't care what, but... Um, a guy, because I read your comments on YouTube, a man by the name of Tyler August told me to try the Black and Ranched from Popeye's. Now, 
Then at the same time, Delicious. basically my friend Roy Wood Jr., he's a comedian, he's on Comedy Central a lot, he's very funny. And he said, how come everybody knows there's a black McDonald's, but the black in Popeyes is silent? <laughs> funny, but this, this, white, oh, this white lady goes to Popeyes. And so I got the black and ranch sauce, which I'm going to unveil. Now, if you've never seen it, well, if you've never been to Popeyes, you have to go. Everything's spicy. I would suggest you have a strong stomach. The people that go, everything makes my stomach hurt. Don't go to Popeyes because <laughs> <laughs> it's going to make your stomach. And there's a lot going on. Delicious. It's not like Kentucky Fried Chicken is more simple, but delicious nonetheless. And then there's buttermilk ranch. If you can tell, for whatever reason, the black and ranch is orange colored. Oh. Mm-hmm. Which makes me always think Thousand Island, which I hate, but I don't think Popeyes would do that to me. So. Did you get spicy or regular? It's, I don't think there is spicy or regular. There's only. No, 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 chicken. Oh. Original this, or spicy? This is original because I want to be able to taste the ranch. And I was afraid the spicy chicken would overtake the ranch. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Can you hear me eating on a <laughs> microphone? Yeah. Wow. I'm good? That's great. <laughs> Wow. We have a winner. Tyler August from YouTube. Thank you for that tip. Compared to the regular ranch, well, the regular ranch tastes like great. It's great. It's great. And they're stingy. You have to really, really <laughs> plead your case for extra ranch. Yeah. Do, you have, do you have regular ranch? It's so good. I don't have, do you have any ranch? <laughs> for you people who don't listen every week, I'm going to keep doing it every week, so get used to it. My sister's friend. Brought her teenagers to down to the lake for a weekend, and all they said to me, like I was, it was almost like I worked at a restaurant. They just kept looking at me because it was my house. Do you have any ranch? It didn't matter what I said. <laughs> hey, the second floor is on fire, and I think all your shit's upstairs. Right? Do you have any ranch? <laughs> Dead serious. So, so now I'm, that's what I say when I'm trying to be dismissive of my siblings. When they call with serious shit, I'm like, right, Jimmy Ranch? Yeah, okay. Anyway, I did realize when I got to the store to appease the teens, I really didn't know what kind of ranch they wanted, so I just bought Hidden Valley Ranch. I mean, that's, I don't know, I don't, I quit, I don't really eat ranch because it's fattening, but it's fucking delicious. And Popeyes, I don't think, Ron White always used to tell me his favorite fast food was Popeyes, and I was like, I'd only had it a few times. And then I went all in, because that sandwich, remember when people were killing each other? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Then also, this is a little, because Valentine's, or as my friend, I won't say his name, so I worked with two guys a long time ago, and one of them <laughs> said incorrectly, Valentine's. And then he would also say, which is my pet peeve of ever, supposedly, so then I would call his business partner for no reason. It didn't have to be February. At just random times of the year, I would say, hey, it's me. Supposedly, it's Valentine's Day. And then I would just hang up. <laughs> so for Valentine's Day, Hershey Kisses has made lava cake kisses. And I opened one already so you didn't have to sit through that. And I have not tasted one. Uh, I like Hershey's. Oh, my God. It's like, yeah, oh, that's a mess. That's not worth it. It's good, but. Uh, have some more chicken. Yeah, maybe if I put it in ranch. Maybe if I put the chocolate lava cake in ranch. It's good, but you'd have to eat the whole thing that just fell everywhere. Okay, it's good. I'd say good, and it's cute. If you forgot a Valentine's present, go to Walgreens. Or CVS, I think I got those. I don't remember where. Somewhere like that. Nothing says I forgot. Like, Nothing says I forgot. <laughs> like, here's a lava cake kiss that's going to, once you open it, um, it's going to explode all over the place. <laughs> I tried. Um, all right. Let's start this episode out right with who? My queen, Dolly. A lot of Dolly updates. I got nothing on Stevie. She's been very quiet. Cher has been extremely, deemly quiet. And Tanya, nothing out of that camp either. Quiet, quiet, quiet. This one, let's start with this. Associated Press to Dolly. Have you gotten your shot yet? 
No, I'm not going to get mine until some people get theirs. I don't want it to look like I'm jumping the line just because I donated money. I'm very funny. I about paid it. for it. Yeah, just because I paid for this shit. Um, I donated money. I'm very funny about that. I'm going to get mine, but I'm going to wait. At least, I'm at least at the age where I could have gotten mine legally last week. I turned 75. I was going to do it on my birthday, and then I thought, nah, don't do that. You just look like you're just doing a show. None of my work is really like that. I wasn't doing it for a show. I was, I'm going to get mine. I want it. I'm going to get it. When I get it, I'll probably do it on camera so people mm -hmm. will know and I'll tell them the truth if I have any symptoms and all that. Hopefully, it'll encourage people. I'm not going to jump the line just before, just because I could. And I'll see. This is what we need a little bit more of. And I almost just said, God damn it. And some YouTube wrote in here and told me, say, quit saying God damn it because it means you're wanting God. Yes, we're Catholic. We say it. If it offends you, you got to move on. You got to find a different podcast because it's going to come out of my mouth. And it doesn't, we're not even talking about God when we say it. Well, maybe we're saying God damn that, whatever it is. And he has the power. And I'm saying, God damn it, this is what we need some more of. So damn the people that don't do it. See, follow, how hard is this? Good for Dolly. You know, she's going to wait. Although as a fan, I wish she'd get in there and get it. But that's okay. You know. She can hang out for a while. She also just released her perfume. Yes, Dolly's perfume called Dolly Shank from Above. It's now available at dollyfragrance.com. Get yours before they're all gone. I don't know. I'm allergic to chemicals like that. You'll have to try that on your own. I can't do it. Here's a little something, too. I think it's a little secret shout out that Dolly doesn't love Trump. But who am I to put words in her mouth? Hm. Nobody. She skipped the, she turned the Presidential Medal of Freedom down twice while Trumpy was president. Now, in good spirit, the good spirit of Dolly, not taking sides politically, um, she said in an interview with, uh, uh, with the Today Show that they tried to give her the um, nation's highest civilian honor twice, but she had to turn them down. I couldn't accept because my husband was ill, and then they asked me again about it, and I couldn't travel because of COVID. Now, both of those sound reasonable, and they absolutely could be true. But she said, now if I feel like it, if I take it, I'll be doing politics. So I'm not sure. But I don't work for these awards. Probably doesn't. I believe that. It'd be nice, but I'm not sure I even deserve it. That's a, it's, but it's a nice compliment for people to think I might deserve it. I wouldn't want to go because the ceremony looks boring as shit. Yeah. They don't do it in a cool way. No. It's in that weird room. Like, I think I saw Shaka Khan in there once. Or it might have been Gladys Knight. Wow. Well. One of, one of the singers of the world. Well, one of my favorites, and I can't remember who. It's like doing a corporate gig. When you see the video, like there's all these people uptight. It's during the day. Yeah. It's too bright. They're in these old fart chairs, and everybody's all uptight. And whoever I saw just busted the place apart. But it still wasn't like being at her, if it was Shaka, it wasn't like being at a Shaka show. It's the performer working their ass off for very little return, which makes always makes me uncomfortable mm -hmm. to watch because I just think it's it's just not done right. The presidential it should be done like the Kennedy Awards, the Honors Awards, where it's a big show that night and then people come out and do your stuff and all that. Um, since 1995, the Jolene Singer has run Dolly Parton's Imagination Library, a literacy mm -hmm. program that's donated more than 100 million children's books in the past 26 years. That's crazy. A hundred million. In 2016, her Dollywood Foundation donated $1,000 per month to several hundred families in East Tennessee that lost their homes to the wildfires. She also donated a million dollars to help coronavirus. We know that. Okay, so that's what's going on there. Um, then they asked Obama, why didn't he give it to her? He said, that's a mistake. I'm shocked. Actually, that was a screw up. I'm surprised. I think, uh, I assumed, uh, she had already, uh, gotten one and, uh, that was incorrect. That's my own <laughs> impression. I'm surprised. She deserves one. He added that he had planned to call Biden, a promise he seemingly kept on word on, given that Parton said she'd heard from the current president already, even though his administration only took office on January 20th. Uh, Obama gave his to several musicians, including Springsteen, Dylan, James Taylor, Stevie Wonder, Diana Roth, Gloria Estefan, and Barbara Streisand. Uh, Trump gave it to the late Elvis Presley. I guess nobody gave out. How'd you miss Elvis? Maybe he died too soon, and then people went, well, well. Also, and this is the last update on Queen Dolly here, 
A college in Florida is offering a whole class on Dolly Parton. What? Finally something I could pass. Wouldn't that be exciting? No math. But at this age, I don't even know how to register for college. I saw my nephews doing it. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't even, I, yeah, I, couldn't, I couldn't even register. That's where I'm at. Yeah, I'd be down there in a line somewhere that doesn't exist. Grace Lager, an instruction at Eckerd College, created a course about Dolly Parton. It examines race, gender, and class through the lens of Parton's work. Through her six-decade six career, Parton has been widely recognized for her music uh, talent and on the silver screen and her philanthropic heart of gold. Now Parton has another accolade. She's the subject of a college course, blah, 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 on the surface. And then she talks about the, you just go through his, uh, you listen to all of her songs and her movies. Mm -hmm. There's something about her, the longevity of her career, the multifaceted three dimension nature of who she is, and the appeal that she has to so many different peoples and so many different walks of life and so many different backgrounds, different political views, different gender identities, all of it. I think there's definitely a group of musical artists who are iconic and then there, and then there's Dolly. Oh, she's putting her above iconic. What's above that? Jesus. Galactical? Is that a word? Galactic? Galactical? Intergalactical. Intergalactical? <laughs> um, and then they, you just go through her stuff, and you know, it's a, it sounds like fun. Easy, easy way for old people like myself to get an A if you can learn how to register. You should get an A if you figured out how to register after seeing all that shit online. I'm like, no, I'd mess that up, I guarantee you. Not good at linear assignments, just registering. And okay, it's update time, termites. This is a COVID update, because I haven't done one in a while, and I know this isn't funny, okay? I'm gonna preface that with this, with that, but it, there's part of it that made me laugh. An Irish gang forging negative COVID-19 tests for European travelers, Europol warns. Irish criminals are allegedly involved in the forging of negative COVID-19 tests to allow people to travel within Europe, Europol has warned. The European Police Agency said that members, it's so Peaky Blinders, members <laughs> of the, the Rathkiller Rovers gang, a group of Irish criminals operating in several European communities, are using a mobile phone application to manually falsify test results, which are then sold to travelers for hundreds of euros each, of euro each. Ireland and several European countries have introduced legislation requiring proof of recent PCR, PCR to oh, positive corona results test, test for a negative result uh, for COVID before allowing passengers into the country, given the widespread technology means available in the, high, in the form of high quality printers and different software. Fraudsters are able to produce high quality counterfeit fraudsters. Fraudsters, I know, like, it's like a cartoon thing. It's like a baby shoe. Where's the fraudster? Criminals are now operating from airports, online, mm -hmm. and through messaging, messaging app. The Rathkill Rovers, but you got to say it like that. Are you a part of the Rathkill Rovers? I am. What are you doing this week? Making fake positive COVID test. Excellent. <laughs> it's based in the Limerick town of the same name. So Limerick, if you're not familiar, is on the west coast of Ireland, kind of near the airport of Shannon you would fly into to get to Limerick. It's an industrial kind of working man, work man's town. Um, but I guess there's, a, guess there's a town, Rathkeel. I've been there many times. I've never stumbled upon Rathkeel, but um, that's what it's, the town is, right next, somewhere near Limerick. Um, a Garda spokesperson said the sale of fake PCR test certificates had not been detected in Ireland to this date. It is understood that the Rathkeel-Ralvers activity in this regard are centered <laughs> on the UK. Members of the gang have previously been arrested for money laundering, smuggling, drug trafficking, and burglary. Uh, the gang sucks. is using a mobile app, allowing them to generate counterfeit results. Yeah, because that's how I got, when I took a COVID test, it came like a thing, and you could just present, why couldn't you just present that at the airport? I get, I get what they're saying. Um, earlier this month, a man was arrested at Lutton Airport in the UK while attempting to sell false test certificates. But here's the thing, if you're at the airport and you're planning on going somewhere in Europe, wouldn't you already have your test? I mean, yeah. you're not gonna, this is like people who sell luggage at the airport. Right. I fucking have it, I'm already here. You're, you, sh zipper, you should have been like three miles outside of the airport when I went, shit, I don't have a suitcase. I don't, I don't understand this. It's for emergencies. You're charged between 150 and 300 euro for, fit for the fake certificate. In December, Spanish National Police arrested a man for selling fake certificates on the internet for 40 euros, while in the Netherlands, scammers were caught selling them between 50 and 60 euro. 
through messaging apps. Wow. So there you go, you guys. If you want to get a fake um, COVID negative contact, the Rathkill Rovers. The Rathkill. <laughs> Rathkill. Rathkill. Update. This is so exciting. If you have any money and you have a way to travel down there, Walter Mercado. Where's Walter? Where's my candle for Walter? He's right here. Is he the end? Yes, yeah. he's the end. Remember our thing on Netflix? Mucho, mucho amor. Mucho, mucho amor. Cochi away. Yeah. My friend Conchi Gonzalez on yeah. Twitter. She lives down there. She's a good Twitter fan. Uh, not even a fan anymore. I'd say a friend. Like I tweet people a lot. And um, Conchi keeps me, uh, what's going on in Puerto Rico? She's a lawyer in Puerto Rico. She's awesome. She's awesome. <laughs> and anyway, um, Walter's house, Walter's dead now. If you watch the show, you, you would know, but so I don't, no spoiler alert there, but his house is for sale. Do you want to hear about it? Yes, you do. Yeah. It's in the stars, the home of the late astrologer and psychic Walter Mercado in San Juan, Puerto Rico. That's why, that's why I told Conchi, go buy it. Is on the market for $395,000. A legendary Spanish television personality who died in 2019 at the age of 87 delivered his hor daily horoscopes with panache, often wearing a cape. It was known for wishing his audiences mucho, mucho amor. Um, then there's a little, a little about his success. We know about all that. Um, we predicted that a buyer will be quite pleased with There's a picture of it. It's cool from the street. It's on a normal street, though. I'm a little surprised. I would think he'd be a little more off the beaten path. Um, the property is, is described as unique and located in an exclusive area of San Juan. Would you be living next to who? My favorite Puerto Rican of all time, Chichi Rodriguez. Oh, yeah. ah, the golfer with the sword. Bam! When he'd take his putter like a sword and he'd go, wah! Shwa. And I thought he was adorable. Very handsome. Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> very non-give a shit. I liked his attitude, and he was very handsome. Um, so here's the here's the description, in case you want to go down to Puerto Rico and buy Walter's house. First level entered from a foyer features three bedrooms. Three good. That's a first level thing. So for old people, do what my parents do: one level living, if possible. <laughs> if you have another floor, it's for visitors or children. <laughs> Which I hope would be visitors, because it'd be weird if you had children and they're not visiting. And they that means you. Yours. That means you stole them. <laughs> that means you're keeping them or you've kidnapped them. Three bedrooms, three bathrooms, living room, dining room, and kitchen. The layout includes an office space, a small kitchen, and a half bathroom. The interiors are printed bright and cheery red and yellows. The stairs are covered with decorative tiles. Okay, I like tile. That's cool. Other details include a 1970 uh, abode, Rhode Island. Oh. Wrought iron, wrought iron, iron, it's hard to read and say, wrought iron railings, arched doorways, and fanciful light fixtures. Upstairs, a separate living room space includes two more bedrooms, two bathrooms, a small kitchen, two terraces, a living room, dining room, family room, and balcony. Outside, you get a pool, a gazebo, and a patio. This is so worth it. <laughs> the covered, I wonder, is it near the ocean, though? Is it going to get wrecked by hurricanes? Somebody, lo somebody looked that up. It doesn't say it. Other amenities include an electric generator that pop great in case of hurricane bullshit, as well as security doors and windows. Good. Uh, born Walter Mercado Salinas, the flamboyant entertainer grew up in Puerto Rico and began delivering his predictions in elaborate costumes on a weekly show on Telemundo back in the 1970s. So there you go. That's a little update on Walter's ongoings of his family. Anyway, if you want to go get by his house, or if you live in Puerto Rico, if you just want to go look at it, I bet you can get an appointment. If you tell them uh, Mama Termite sent you, <laughs> you definitely will not. <laughs> get a weird look. Oh, this was for my ranch hunt. Um, somebody on Twitter, you guys send me great stuff, and I do read it all. Somebody sent me that I should go to Dairy Queen because they have their own house made Hidden Valley Ranch. And then I just saw a pre Super Bowl commercial about that. And I haven't been to a Dairy Queen since I was a kid, and I love Dairy Queen. I don't know why I forget about it. You just don't see them that much, I no guess. Burgers. They're burgers. Cheeseburgers are great. Yeah. Um, so by next week, I hope to find a Dairy Queen, and I'm going to try that ranch, and I'll compare it on my hunt for ranch, my ranch hunt. And I got, are you hunting for ranch? Do you have any ranch? <laughs> are you going to get some ranch? What ranch do you like? I'm going to go try that ranch. Update! This is a little update on the American Revolution. Because we're, well, we're almost done with it, paddles. No, we're not. 
Paddles doesn't like hard stuff. <laughs> this isn't that hard. This is funny. Funny to me. Not funny to everyone. And f when things aren't funny to you, termites, there's no reason to write seven paragraphs on the YouTube channel page about why. I'm going to write. You can write, <laughs> Paddles. Thanks. Paddles, you've been complimented on your show notes. You're going to, you get people are going to create a monster. <laughs> They are a pain in the ass, though. And then, yeah, and she are. does do a very good job. <laughs> Here we go. Remember Kyle Rittenhouse? Now, he wasn't part of the revolution. He was pre-revolution. He was a pre-revolutionary. He was in the Black Lives Matter thing that went off. Uh, the kid who shot two people. Prosecutors said accused Kenosha protest shooter Kyle Rittenhouse has violated the conditions of his release. Wong, wong. A judge allowed Rittenhouse, now 18, of Antioch, Illinois, to be released in November on two million cash bail. Now, who put up that money? We know for sure. Um, Silver Spoons actor Ricky Schroeder gave hundreds, of, hundreds of thousands. They said. So I don't know where the whole two million came from because it was cash. You have to have all of it. Um, but I know he gave hundreds of thousands because he said. Um, he felt, and I would just like to point out my friend Scott Kennedy, who's no longer with us, and he was gay. He had a picture of Silver Spoons. Mm -hmm. Ricky Schroeder, again, has my idol, has my idol gone awry? Let's look at my locker with a picture of Sean Cassidy. Nothing but goodness. <laughs> Successful producer, writer, director in Los Angeles. He didn't do anything bad. He didn't beat people up. He's not a crazy person. <sighs> Ricky Schroeder. I think the My Pillow guy too. That crazy person. He was um, tweeting out, you got to give money to this thing. Well, here's the thing, Ricky, Schmicky. Um, if nobody finds little Kyle, you're going to be out all that money. And you'll have to do more NYPD Blue. More, yeah, he was in it. No, he was in a Law and Order. Or was it NYPD, no, NYPD Blue? Blue? Was it NYPD yeah. Blue? He graduated from Silver Spoons. <laughs> well, NYPD Blue, that's a good game. We can get it. I don't remember it. <laughs> He's currently awaiting trial for shooting deaths of two men who were protesting the police shooting of Jacob Blake. Prosecutors filed a motion Wednesday saying the court was unable to deliver a hearing notice for Rittenhouse at the address. He listed it on, on, at, as his home on the release paperwork. The notice was returned to the court because a forwarding address was not known. He just bullshitted him and put, it a, put a fake address. He shouldn't have been... He, don't put up bail for this kid. You, you are being charged... I think with murder, I don't know what, if nothing else, assault with a deadly weapon. I don't know what his charges were, but this kind of crime, you don't just go, well, Ricky Schroeder from Silver Spoons thinks you're awesome, so we're just going to let you run wild. And then there's videos of, of him at some bar, I think in, I don't know if it was in Wisconsin, I think, I think. Was, yeah. partying with Proud Boys and white supremacists and drinking. He's not supposed to be drinking. Because he's 18. <laughs> well, Yeah. But is, can you drink at 18 in Wisconsin? No. Giggle it, Paddles. No, it's 21 unless you're in Alberta, Canada. Alberta, Canada, which is the thing on my shirt. Yeah. My friend sent me this shirt from Alberta Wear. Can you see that? And I love it because to me it looks like Star Trek The Next Generation. Mm -hmm. It is. I don't know what it's supposed to be. Alberta blends. This shirt says nothing else. It just has this like space signal thing. We'll put it in the show notes. I like it. Yeah. The courts cannot find him. Prosecutors now want his bond for ch charges and two homicides raised. <laughs> well, go ahead, raise it. You can't find him. Jesus. The judge asked Rittenhouse bail to increase Rittenhouse's bail by $200,000 for the violation and issue a warrant for his arrest. Prosecutors said they were unable to monitor Ritten, Rittenhouse's whereabouts because he failed to notify that, him that he moved. Well, why doesn't he at least have the leg thing on? Is, is it? Drinking into Wisconsin. There's two Googles. One with parents. Oh, what? Also 21. Uh, Oh, it's both 21? Yes. They thought maybe if I was with my mom and dad, I could drink it like 12? Yeah, it's federal. You're not French. <laughs> okay, here's the thing, Wisconsinites. I like the swing and a miss. It was a miss, though, but I like that you're swinging. What about all my parents? No. What about all my confirmation? No. What about graduation? No. 21. So he shouldn't have been. Yeah, you're right. Prosecutors wrote in their filings Wednesday that Rittenhouse demonstrated his carefree attitude by going to a bar immediately after his arraignment, January 5th, 2021, and drinking three beers in the company of known Proud Boys while flashing white supremacist signs and wearing a free as a expletive shirt. Free as fuck. Fuck? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Smart. He's smart. He's smart. He's very smart. <laughs> The, the, the levels of ignorance and stupidity you are you're filming yourself in a bar it's less than four characters free, for, free as fuck <laughs> oh it's going up and down instead of just across free as fuck f they should just put f a f yeah it's like a dumb f it's a dumb person crossword <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Kenosha, Kenosha, Kenosha detectives say they went to the apartment Rittenhouse listed as his address, and a man there said he'd rented the apartment since December 15th, and Rittenhouse no longer lived there. Kyle, you can't do this. Nope. You can try, and you will get away with it for X amount of time. But, God damn, just ruining any chance. R Rittenhouse's defense attorney filed a response to the prosecutor's motion, objecting to the bond increase. Well, I mean, that's just imaginary at this point. It doesn't even fucking matter. They said him and his family have received death threats since the Kenosha shootings, and they moved into a safe house and deleted their social media accounts. That's fine, but you have to tell the court where you went. You don't just get to go, we're so scared, we moved into a safe house. And what happened to all your proud boys? Why aren't they protecting you? Huh? Because huh? free uh. as fuck. Free as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so, it's so American dumb. <laughs> like, there's a special kind of dumb that America brings to the party. Yeah. Uh, I don't see it on the Canadian Twitter that I follow all that stuff. Although I did see a, a Karen yeah. in Alberta, Canada, in a grocery store, and you just don't—they don't. Their videos don't pop up like that so much. And boy, did she get it hand or ass handed to her. But anyway, Richards claimed upon Rittenhouse's relief, he was told to not disclose this, the location of his safe house. He said a member of the defense team contacted prosecutors to provide Rittenhouse's new address. Richards said the prosecutor refused that request. He said he would provide Rittenhouse's current address if kept confidential by the court. That's what you should have done in the beginning. If I was the judge, I'd be so pissed. They just dug the hole even deeper. Update. <laughs> Kyle. Isn't that the Karen version on Twitter when they say Karens, they do Kyle's? Yeah. Sit down, Kyle. Kyle. Take your free as fuck shirt off, Kyle. <laughs> free as fuck. That is a great one. I'm gonna, I can't wait to tell my brother that one. I'm going to make bumper stickers and sell them for a dollar. F-A-F. Oh, no, they won't even get that. They'll go, fuff, fuff. <laughs> No, the bumper stickers is just going to say free as fuck. Maybe have an eagle on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I'm cussing too much this podcast, but he did it. I didn't. I just read it. He did. Kyle did it. <laughs> Blame Kyle. <laughs> Kyle. 18 years old running around with guns and shit. And his mother was, I think his mother was there too. It's always, they always love that they bring their mom. She bought him the shirt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, she did buy him the shirt because he was out of uh, allowance money, which he never got because she doesn't have any money to give him. Texas real estate agent who took the private jet is charging capital riot. Capital riot. Remember that lady? The blonde Richie Rich? Well, she had a private jet. I don't know if she's rich, but she got a hold of a private jet. Uh, she took a private jet to the riot and called it the best day of her life. Well, <laughs> I will never forget. I can't. Well, my, my friend Ron spent the day with one of my friends who was super excited that, that he got to spend the day with Ron. I can't say that my friend Ron felt the same way. And Ron, <laughs> Ron goes, isn't it amazing, Maddie, how in the same day on the same planet, it can be the greatest day to one man and the worst day of his life to another <laughs> man. And they spent it together. Well, this is how she's going to feel. <laughs> Jennifer Ryan, she said it was the best day of her life. Well, she's now facing federal charges. What did I say on my Twitter feed while this was happening live? Stop filming yourself. I'm not trying to help those people. I don't agree with those people. I think it was wrong with what they did. But from a, the, the perspective of just a human plus being a lawyer's daughter, don't snitch on yourself. People filming yourself and posting it on the facial book. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jennifer Ryan, who goes by Jenna, Jenna Ryan on social media, is the last person charged in connection. Oh, I'm sorry, is the latest, not the last. Latest person charged in connection to the January 6th attack. People that left five people dead, including a Capitol officer. Federal authorities said in court documents released Friday that Ryan traveled with a group to D.C. on January 5th and documented her two-day trip on social media. Uh-huh. 
in one deleted video, then they all go to try to delete this shit. Just leave it up, okay? Because we it's it's there forever. You can't. This stuff is. This is the other thing that I would t I say to nieces and nephews. Like, don't post shit. You're gonna go for a job interview when you're 25 years old, and then they're gonna go, "Is this you in a banana outfit, drunk, leaping off the back of a of a, a lake barge?" And you're gonna have to explain that. <laughs> and maybe there's a good explanation, because everything I said just sounds kind of fun. Mm -hmm. But don't post it. You don't have to post every goddamn thing you do. We're gonna go down and storm the Capitol. They're down there right now, and that's why we came, and that's what we're going to do. So wish me luck. That was in her deleted video. Another video that's still up on her Facebook page uh, shows her and a group of President Trump supporters walking towards the Capitol. This is a prelude to the war that's about to happen, she warns. I think she means the storm, <laughs> if you're a Q person. She also live streamed herself entering the building. <sighs> and this is what she said. We're going to fucking go in here. Life or death, it doesn't matter. Here we go, she said in a now deleted video. Ryan then later added, y'all know who to hire for your realtor. Jenna Ryan for your realtor. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. wow. Ma'am, how does this tie into selling a home? I mean, you're invading a home. You're invading property. Authorities said hours after the breach, Ryan wrote on her Twitter that she had just stormed the Capitol. It was one of the best days of my life, she wrote according to the court documents. Another photo included documents showing her standing next to a broken window at the Capitol. In the caption, she said that news studios would be the next. Oh, they're going to the news stations. If the news doesn't stop lying about us, you're documenting it. <laughs> my God. She was charged with disorderly conduct on Capitol grounds and knowingly entered a remain or remaining in any restricted building or grounds without lawful entry. It's not clear if she has obtained an attorney. And then she's kind of um, turned, her, turned her story here. I do not condone the violence that occurred. Well, how do you think you all got in? You, and you walked with them. You followed. So you did mm -hmm. condone it. Then she wrote, I'm truly heartbroken for the people who've lost their lives. Hatred and violence. Except we're going to, let's go back a page. We're going to fucking go in here. Because we're free as fuck. No, that's the other guy. <laughs> Kyle said that. She didn't say that. Hatred and violence towards one another are not going to solve our country's I issues. Your shit was violent that day. That was violent. They knocked down barriers. They knocked down cops. They r trampled people to death. Mm -hmm. As a nation, we need to come together. Republican, Democrat, or Independent have an open and honest discussion about the issues and resolve our issues in peace. Well, that's not the way you went about it, is it, Jenna? This is a long one, but I'm going to make it short. It's one more update on the American Revolution. Guess who sponsored it? Guess who gave the most money to make this day happen? Do you want to guess, Paddles? And I'll, I'll even give you a hint. Okay. It is the heiress of a major grocery store chain. Publix. Publix is correct! Publix! Paddles for the win. I don't know her name. Julie, Jenna, Julie Jenkins Fancelli heiress to public supermarket chains, has been revealed as the top donor to the January 6th MAGA rally in D.C. She gave $300,000 in a, oh yeah, 300 grand in a deal orchestrated by Alex Jones. Why anybody would give that man a nickel? He always looks sweaty, <laughs> doesn't he? Nervous. Which makes me think, then I just think he does blow. I mean, that's not, maybe not the case, but that's what I think when I see people my age overly sweaty, I think they're doing blow. Nervous, blow, <laughs> agitated, jumpy, all the shit I've seen from cokeheads. The money was donated through the Trump fundraising office official Carolyn Wren. Wren and her firm were paid $730,000 by the Trump campaign and a joint GOP committee in the 2020 election cycle. Jones himself gave 50 grand in seed money. That's probably all he's got. In the event, in an exchange for a top speaking slot, which was eventually used for another rally. Now... I'm not going to read you all this because it's kind of boring, but um, Publix is saying they don't have anything to do with this lady. She's an heir to the Florida-based Publix supermarkets established by her father in 1930. Wow. Florida. Who knew? Yeah, I didn't even really know about Publix until I got until spent time in the South. It wasn't in the Midwest growing up. I never heard of it. Or I missed it. I just know Kroger and Deerbergs and Schnucks. Um... 1930, making her a member of one of the richest families in America. 
As of December 2020, they listed the Jenkins family, who knew, as the 39th richest family in the United States, worth $8.8 billion. Oh. Holy shit. shit. The family owns 20% of Publix, which has more than 1,200 grocery stores across the southeastern United States. So I was right. It is just the southeast. Another, they're, they're nice stores, I gotta say. Yeah. And they're, um, their sliced boar's head ham is delicious. And you can do it, order it before you get there, and then you don't have to wait in the deli line. I shouldn't probably be, you know, <laughs> advocating, <laughs> advocating. but they're saying person. they have nothing to do with it. And here's the other thing. The other 80%, the family owns 20% of Publix, but the, fam the employees, 80% is owned by employee owned. So at least I feel like if I go there, I'm giving, helping the employees. It's not just this lady. Um, it's the largest employee-owned company in the country. That's nice. Founded by her father, George. The company made ba -ba -ba, $38 billion in revenue. Ba -ba -ba. Um, according to the Broward News, News Times, hold my beer, Florida, the Van Selly <laughs> family holds no decision-making power at Publix and has no business with the supermarket chain. Yet it had been funneling Yet it had been funneling as a $1.7 million a year to vendor Alma Foods, a company Julie Jenkins Fiscelli once owned. After she left the company in 2017, public stopped using Alma Foods. So it sounds like she got the money, but it doesn't sound like they're highly involved. So we can't blame Publix for this, but just know, wow, she must spend her money because guess what? Fancelli has not made Forbes' richest list, but her two siblings, Carol and Howard, have both been listed among its billionaires. She and two of her children also previously donated to Trump ally Robert, Governor Ron DeSantis. If there's ever a guy that has a face that's punchable, it's Ron DeSantis. <laughs> like, and I don't know, he might be a nice man. I don't think he's been the best governor as far as organizing things. He, he always seems, he, it's, it's his attitude, I think. I don't know enough about his politics, but I, anytime he gets asked a question, he just goes, what am I supposed to know? He just gets crazy. Why would you ask something like that? Well, I was just asking, where are the vaccines going to be distributed? That's up to other people. You he's 84 he, interns. <laughs> he, he's always hot and bothered. And he just looks irritated all the time. At least, like... I don't know, like in Missouri, the governor, Parsons, like, he's not, he doesn't, I don't think he's a timely good governor, but he's not, um, like, constantly Explosive. irritated, and, and, he's, and he answers questions, he just doesn't go, why the fuck did you ask me something like that? <laughs> and he's always hot. Decide, the Santa's always looks hot to me, sweaty, yeah. always pudgy and sweaty, but then I think, well, it's Florida, he's probably outside, he's probably hot. Don't wear a suit. Well, I think he looks more, I think he thinks he looks more important in a suit, which he does if you put him in a golf shirt. Less and he's, dumb. Less dumb. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Her, her siblings right. have money because they're not funding revolutions. Uh, anyway, so that's Publix. There's a lot on this lady. I'll have to go read about this lady. Now I'm kind of interested in the 39th richest, bitches, richest bitches family in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about that? All right. Here's a little something we're going to do next week on Jordan Peterson. Yeah, this is crazy shit. Go Google Jordan Peterson if you never heard of him so you're caught up to what we're talking about yeah. next week. Canadian psycho. He is a Canadian strange person. I'm not going to use the word psycho paddles. Why? Because people go, I think he's got a really nice thing to say. He is not nice. Um, did I get through that? Here's another update. I have a lot of updates this week. It was a good week for stuff. And people sent me great stuff this week. You guys find just as good as stuff. You're, everybody's kind of on track of the kind of things we want to talk about, meaning you guys too. And um, you sent me great stuff. The Reddit traders, remember the children with the GameStop? Yeah. Mm hmm. <laughs> the stock plunged 84% in four days and hedge funds profited 3.6 billion. Here's the thing, children. I told you this was going to be like musical chairs. <laughs> And there's going to be like 10 of you without a chair when the music stops. Just get out before. It's a game. And if you didn't get out, now you're just stuck back to where you started, which is no big deal. You're back to where you started, depending on where you bought. But if you bought before the children decided to raid it, you're fine. If you went in the middle, you're not fine. You needed to sell it. Um, and then they were like, no, don't do it. You can't. Here's the problem. It's GameStop. You can't say we're on board. You... It, Right. It's not a product that has the viability to match how much it was worth. You can't, I mean, 
there's not enough tangibles. There's there's tangible things about GameStop. Here's how many stores we have. Here's how much money they make. It doesn't add up to being worth three hundred eighty four dollars a share. It just it doesn't. The peak was four hundred and thirty eight bucks because everybody did it, and then it went down to seventy three. Yeah. So <laughs> it was fun to do. It was fun for a minute, you know, and it showed the short sellers and the Wall Street bigwigs that if I was say the children. But you have to say, say it like Michael Jackson. The children. And when I say the children, I just mean young people. Which, by the way, I looked this up. Because I am tired of misusing it myself. Everybody who's over, I'd say 45 or even 40, just calls anybody younger than them millennials. And it's not fair because sometimes millennials are getting thrown under the bus for things that who? Generation Z does. That's right. So here's so you know. Generation Z, this was the girl at Target when I tried to return the ink and I told her my story, which was true. And after I said the whole story, she just went, I really don't care. Just go get one. <laughs> wow. If it ain't about them, they don't give a shit, which was kind of nice, I guess. I mean, as a customer, I could probably do it every week. I wouldn't though, because then I would feel guilty and then I'd think something bad was going to happen to me. Generation Z is 25 years and younger. Millennials are 25 to 40. I have a lot of comedian friends that are over 40 that in my mind, they're millennials because of their behavior. Yeah. Yeah. Where yeah. they're like, yeah, I don't know. My parents will pay for that. I'm like, what? You're married. <laughs> you have a baby. I don't know. Generation <laughs> X, which would be me. That's, they're all within a year or two. So anywhere from 40 to 42 to 50 to 57. Boomers, 55 to 57 to 75. And then my parents, I didn't even know this was a group. And this does not describe my parents. Traditionalist, nay nay. As no. John Panette would say, no. si the silent generation. No. no. They are the most mouthy people. And especially now because they're old and they don't care. So now they'll just say anything. To the point of, oh my God, what are you doing? Stop talking. One time my dad saw this old guy with a World War II hat and it had medals on it, like medals that, and he was old enough, you did tell that was his hat, but he was driving a Toyota and he got out of it. And my dad goes, I'm going to go say something. I go, no, 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 you're not. No, you're not. Me and mom are leaving. If you are, shh, jackalope, quiet. <laughs> He goes, I just don't understand how you could have fought in World War II and then go buy a Japanese car. I go, well, maybe he's over it, and you're not. And you didn't even go to World War II. So why don't you just leave it up to that man? But that's what I'm talking about. Like an old age, older age, they're not silent. But that's what they're called. Lewis's mother, she's 102. I don't think they have a section for that. They called n n no longer named. Get around, man. I guess. Well, it said 75 to question mark, so I guess. I guess. All right, the next segment. What are we watching? Oh, my God. Okay. Well, I've watched a lot because it's been cold. Um, and I don't have a vaccine, so I'm not going anywhere. Um, what are we watching? Okay. So we're watching. Have you guys watched Murder at White House Farms? my mother's biggest fear every time we would move we moved a lot for fun it's not like we were on the run the no my parents just like new shit which in ret retrospect i do admire um they like to take on new things we owned a resort for a while we lived on a lake over the ozarks we lived on a farm for a while and i mean he was always a lawyer and she was always a nurse but we did all these other things it was fun um but my mom never liked being secluded because all she could think of is the Truman Capote uh, in cold blood. I said, Mom, that's one in a billion that somebody goes into a, a farmhouse and murders people for no reason. It's just never, it's not really a thing. It, it happened, but it's not really a thing. It can happen. But if you watch Murder at White House Farms, um, it's a crazy, crazy story about a, uh, in England a farmhouse, which I never pictured those kind of farms in England. I picture farms, but not like this one. Not like hay or wheat. I just picture sheep, I guess. Goats. Goats, cows, cattle, some cattle. Not like our cattle ranches, but like they have some. 
like Kerrygold cows. Kerrygold, Kerrygold butter, best butter in the whole world in Ireland. And I've been to the Kerrygold farm in Ireland, and I met the employee of the month at that time. It was Elsie, a cow. <laughs> I love that they give a cow employee of the month. <laughs> it's so funny. Anyway, go watch Murder at White House Farms. That's on HBO. I've watched, I already finished it, so I'm not going to give it away. I am also in the middle of, what are we watching? Oh, my God. And after the Super Bowl tonight. There's an episode, another episode. They release two at a time. I think there's only four total. It's on HBO. It's called The Lady and the Dale. And I'm just going to say it's about a man who became a woman way back when this was not a thing. And then bought the patent for a three-wheeled vehicle. Every single thing that comes out of my mouth is more unbelievable than the next. And that's why you have to watch the show. And then the daughter, who's probably in her 60s now, is narrates a lot of this, talks about it. And she seems like it was just the funnest adventure that's ever happened to any family. She does not seem upset about it or harmed by it or pissed. Mm -hmm. So maybe it was super fun. I don't know. Um, but I also can't believe this is the result of not having the Google machine or the giggle machine, as I like to call it. This guy got away with so much being in the public eye when he, in fact, had this criminal record. Nobody ever looked into when people... It's still true today. No matter, I could tell the press literally, oh, I graduated from Boston College, which is totally not true. No one would look it up. That's the thing. People just believe shit. Like, I've never... One time on my Wikipedia page for, like, two years, it said I was married... I'd been married to Carrot Top. Now, I didn't even... I don't Wikipedia myself, but some radio guy brought it up, and he's like... Why'd you and Carrot Top split up? I go, I don't even know what you're talking about. I mean, he's my friend. His real name's Scott, but I don't, I like him. We get along great. We have a lot of fun together. He's like, no, I know, but I mean, after the relationship, I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, your Wikipedia page. I go, I was not married to Carrot Top. I go, but you know what? I'm not going to take that down because it's funny. <laughs> he's a wonderful choice. I should have been married to Carrot Top. Yeah, but yeah. He, he was very popular. Um, <laughs> much more popular than me. Um... I don't, it's hard to believe when you watch this show, and I'm not going to give it away because I haven't even seen the last two episodes, that nobody, first of all, the dude, he looks like, kind of like a woman, but he kind of looks like a man still, which, okay, fine. But when he's saying who he is, and he's clearly kind of bordering on scamming, nobody went and looked that up till now we're getting into it. People are starting to go, wait a minute, where did he say he's from? What does he say he did? And But they didn't have Google, they didn't have a computer, so you'd have to like call yeah. the Boston College and go, was Kathleen Madigan a student at the blah, blah, blah. And Boston College, if I said that, there's probably another Kathleen Madigan. Right. Because of the Irish people up that way, there's, I've already met another Kathleen Madigan, a much smarter version of myself. <laughs> she <laughs> writes very, very hard uh, financial articles like about the global economy and she's wonderful I met her I've met her quite a few times now she's come to a bunch of shows she's a lot of fun I'm glad my doppelganger with the same name as me is fun and she not. Doesn't care and about you would rich. think she might be a nerd by the things she writes and she was not she might have a nerd side but she has a super social fun side so that was um, awfully nice so that's it they're both on HBO the lady and the Dale it's unbelievable and we'll be talking more about that next week because there's still two episodes left which I hope they are airing after the Super Bowl tonight. I don't know if they're going to... I don't understand... One episode a week. What? Really? Yeah. God damn. Yeah. They released two to begin with, and now one a week. You can't... You know what? This is like feeding rats cocaine. This is what's <laughs> going on. You gave us binging. Netflix, HBO, all of you people, you gave us binging, and now you're taking it away. Yeah. Mm -mm. You want a room full of angry, coked-up rats? Because that's how I feel. When I see only one episode, I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm unemployed. God damn it. I can stay up till 4 a.m. <laughs> Do you know how much ranch I'm going to have to eat to get through this problem? <laughs> Drown myself. <sighs> All right, I told you we're going to do our little segment. Then who? Our research assistant. <laughs> oh, here, we'll do him. He's my research assistant. Right here, Louis Black. Oh, this isn't the talking one. Oh, I gotta get the talk. I have a talking bubble. It is. No, it. Oh, yeah, it is. Nobody gives a shit. 
Yeah, yeah. nobody. That's Lewis. There we go. Here's my research assistant. Holy fuck! <laughs> <laughs> my research assistant sent me because even he's clicking into the stuff I like now, and I it's seven important things that were invented by women. Just because I think women should have a shout out every now and then for stuff that we've done that we don't get credit for. Right. And this week we're doing beer. Women. That's what they say. And I'm gonna read you why. I always thought it was um women invented beer. Yeah. Oh, Hold on. I'm gonna great. tell you why. Great. I gotta there's all kinds of good shit. Beer. Um, beer has a long, strange, and interesting history. Whether you prefer an IPA or deliciously dark stout, the long process that has perfected beer in your cup was originally carried out by women. Historians have pointed out that all of the beer making and crafting, crafting was likely handled by women. In fact, it was only when medieval, medieval and modern Christianity came about that beer making was usually done was done by men, usually monks who had decided to live on beer alone for months. Now that's what I thought. I'm picturing the monks at Skellig Rock or. Most Saint Michelle, where they just go to some island rock, and um, that's who I thought did it. But no, and here is the brewmaster, because I got this off the History Channel, which is one of my favorite uh, things in my adult life. Is the History Channel, which did not exist when I was a child. If you're searching for original brewmaster to toast, the next time you knock back one, you might be out of luck. It's difficult to attribute the invention of beer to a particular culture or time of beer or time period, but the world's first fermented beverages most likely emerged alongside the development of cereal. Cereal agriculture some 12,000 years ago as, hunt as hunter-gatherer tribes settled into an agrarian civilization based on around staple crops like wheat, rice, barley, and maize. They may have also stumbled upon the fermentation process and started brewing beer. In fact, some anthropologists have argued that these early people's insatiable thirst for hooch may have contributed to the Neolithic revolution by inspiring new agriculture. Blah, 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 blah. I'm trying to get to the part. Okay, here we go. The earliest known alcoholic beverage is, nine, is a 9,000 year old Chinese concoction made from rice, honey, and fruit. Ugh. 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 And the first barley beer, yay, was most likely born in the Middle East. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> while people, matter of fact, I need you. While people were no doubt um, uh, brewing it earlier, hard evidence, of beer, hard evidence of beer production dates back about 5,000 years ago to the Sumerians of ancient Mesopotamia. Archaeologists have unearthed ceramic vessels from 34 B, 3400 BC, still sticky with beer residue, and, 18, and the 18, 1800 BC's Hymtinikasi, an ode to the Sumerian goddess of beer, describes a recipe for the beloved ancient brew made by female priestesses. These nutrient-rich studs were the cornerstone of the Sumerian diet and were likely a safer alternative to drinking water from nearby rivers and canals. Yeah, because what did everybody do? We know what they did in rivers and canals. Yeah. Which were often contaminated by animal waste and human waste. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Beer consumption flo also flourished under the Babylonian Empire, but a few ancient cultures love knocking back but few ancient cultures love knocking back a few as much as the Egyptians. Workers along the Nile were often paid with an allotment of nutritious sweet brew, and everyone from pharaohs to peasants and even children drank beer as part of their everyday diet. Well that's wonder that can you imagine? just having a bunch of drunk kids running around. Many of these ancient beer flavors were flavored with unusual additives, such as mandrake, dates, and olive oil. Oh, mm. more modern tasting libations would not arrive until the Middle, e Middle Ages. When, so that's the one we would know. Uh, when Christian monks and other artisans began brewing beer seasoned with hops. There you go, female priestesses, we're the ones who did it. Nice. Next time you have a beer, which I'm having right now, a Corona Familiar. Thank the ladies. Okay, we're back to animals that can kill you in your state. I know you're disappointed with these answers, some of them paddles, and so am I. But I'm going with the, what the CDC says. Minnesota, what do you think is going to kill you there? Bear. I thought a bear too. Nope, deer. What? Yeah. <laughs> what? Vehicle collisions. Number one. Top culprit of animal-related deaths. Mississippi. This surprises the shit out of me, too. What do you think? Hmm. Snake. I would have thought a snake. Poisonous snake. Nope. Deer. What? 
I know. I think this is lazy. But the CDC lists a large mammal. Uh, List a large mammal is the most likely animal to kill you in Mississippi. However, the number of animal deaths in this state are extremely low. There are black bears in Mississippi, which is surprising. I don't picture them in the South that much. Mm -hmm. But they don't cross paths with human often, and they've never been, never been any reported attacks in Mississippi. While technically not the fault of the animals, do inadvertently cause a few deaths in Michigan every year, according to... Where do we go to Michigan? What? I'm on Mississippi. No, they wrote that wrong. I didn't read that wrong. Anyway, it's dear. But let's move on to Missouri, my state. What do you think, Paddles? Some of your relatives. <laughs> Some of my relatives could kill you. Yes. Um, um, copperhead. Snake. Missouri venomous snakes. Yep. Yeah, gross. Uh, it's the second state listed in the CDC's report as a place likely to die by an attack by a large reptile. Much like Illinois, this seems very unlikely. However, almost all reported alligator attacks come from Florida. The alligator's habitat range doesn't reach as far north as Missouri. Right. You're much more likely to die from a bite from one of their five species of venomous snakes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Or from an encounter with a domestic livestock animal. So they're blaming the cows again. <laughs> Missouri, here's the problem. We have cottonmouths. A lot in the lakes. Copper heads. I'm always afraid at the farm in the fall because they look exactly like the leaves. Um, rattlesnakes. I've never seen one, but I know they're in Missouri. What am I forgetting? Cottonmouths, copper heads, rattlesnake. I don't know. I'm going to have to look up the other two. Are blue racers? Are those poisonous? We don't have coral snakes. I don't know what the other two are. I'll have to go look that up. Speaking of Missouri but we do have a lot of snakes. I'm always surprised when I go do things in other states and I'm like, aren't you afraid of snakes? And they look at me like, we don't really have those. I'm like, what? <laughs> like every single thing I do at a lake or at the farm in Missouri, I am hyper aware that there's possibly a snake there. If I go into the barn and get a four wheeler out, I'm just, I just know it's gonna happen. And sometimes it does, it scares the shit out of me. I'm not a snake person, it's not my thing. I'd rather, honestly, I'd rather see a wolf or a coyote or a bear than a snake. And that's not logical. I know that. I know that. But that's my reaction. I'm holding here a letter <laughs> from an HOA. Not my HOA. My brother's. I don't really have one. There's only three houses in the cove and I'm in charge. So I guess I have one. But it's just me. I'm the only one paying attention. Which is fine. My brother, though, is part of what I call the Truman Show lifestyle. <laughs> she has seen the Truman Show. He lives in a subdivision in uh, Missouri, in Columbia, where the University of Missouri is. What, what? We just beat Alabama in basketball. That never happens, and it did. 2021, turn around. Um, and it, they're nice houses, you know, but there's billions of them, and there's like five you choose from, and then you choose from that, and then they repeat. And it's just like you would expect in middle America. And it's wonderful if you have kids because they can just go play and you don't really have to worry. Like, it's not like, you know, you're in a dangerous area. This is a letter. Um, I, I will not say my sister-in-law's name just to protect them. Dear Madigans, let's put it that this letter is real. I put it on my Instagram and my Twitter. It's been brought to our attention that there is a current issue with your cat in the neighborhood and it, that it is going into other homes, going in, and taunting cats that are indoors, causing them to act out. Per the Covenants, Article 2, Section 8, no pet shall be permitted to run at large off the lot of the pet owner unless such pet is on a leash under the control of a competent person. Well, I don't think anyone in my brother's house is competent. So <laughs> what if you... I'm kidding, but who's to say there's someone competent in every home? So incompetent people get a pet, then what? If the association received three complaints in violation of the provisions of this paragraph against a pet owner in regard to any said dog, cat, or pet, the association shall have the right to require removal said dog, cat, or pet from the development. Thank you for your attention to this matter. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to contact Community Association Management via email, pop, 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 phone number, sincerely, so-and-so. 
So I don't, <laughs> maybe other people have cat doors. How is, my brother's cat is named Bruce. It's a strange looking thing. It was free at a cat fair in Columbia, Missouri. And my brother's oldest uh, boy is autistic, high functioning aut autism. And he really wanted a cat. So they let him pick the cat out. Uh, he named it Bruce after Bruce Wayne because he likes Batman. And um, they had to pay for like shots. Total, Bruce is worth $34. <laughs> 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 alive. <laughs> alive, right. It has to be alive. Daddy's worth nothing. Um, so I don't know what Bruce, the responses, I posted this all on Twitter, the responses people wrote back were so funnier than anything I've ever written. And then somebody said, oh, I get the difference between Twitter and Facebook. Twitter gets this, just the, the ludicrous nature of this, the way it's presented. You know, if there's a cat causing problems, okay, you have a conversation with somebody with this letter. It, it's the ludicrousness of the, the extent of the language and the presentation of the argument that's funny to me and to most all Twitter people. And Twitter goes, somebody on Twitter goes, oh, I get the difference. Everybody on Twitter here gets it, and they're sending pictures back. Like this one orange cat is like looking super sexy, and she's on her back going, "Tell Bruce to swing on by. I got nothing but time." Like <laughs> people got it, yeah. and she goes, "But on Facebook, this is devolved into an argument about whether cats should be inside or outside." Right. Ugh, missing the point. Missing the point. Facial book. Missing the point. That's where facial book gets annoying. This is, just a, this is just a joke about the letter. It's not about the cat. It's not about what's going to happen to the cat. It's not about where the cat lives or doesn't live. I don't know if cats should be inside or outside. Ours have always been outside because, I don't know, we just lived in a place where cats go outside. And then they come home at night if they feel like it. And if they don't, they're kind of fuck you. They don't care. Sometimes they don't come home at all. And you know what I said? That's on you. You don't want to come home to a beautiful house? And I have a wonderful blanket and a couch. And the whole, you know, it's your castle. My sister's cat, Cha-Cha. She don't care. She don't care. She don't care. The other one's scared shitless. It always stays like two feet in front of the front door. Meow, meow, meow. <laughs> then her second cat is a total chicken shit. But the first cat, because we found it at the farm. It was feral for like two days. It acts like it was feral in Africa for 10 years. It's mean. Whew. Never got nice. Anyway, uh, if you go on my Twitter or uh, Instagram, you can see some really funny responses, which was the whole intention of, like, my brother doesn't have enough shit going on. He's got him and his wife. They've got three kids under the age 10. One's autistic. It's COVID. It's if they're hiding to homeschool. And then you, he's like, what's this letter? And, and she goes, you're not going to want to read it. It's going to make you drink more. And he's like, are they fucking kidding? Oh, my God. What has Bruce been doing, Pat? That's what I would say to my brother. What's Bruce been doing? He's going into other homes. How? Through a cat door? And taunting. Causing the cats to act out. What does that mean? I want to know what a cat, act, quote, acting out. I know what, when my sister's cat acts out, it bites you while you're petting it. I call that acting out. Yeah. Like I'm petting it, and it seems real nice, and it just goes... <laughs> Speaking of why, speaking of Missouri, Oklahoma, I've been, I've put you in the trouble box two weeks in a row. I'm going to take that beer back and you can say, hold my beer as Missouri. I'm going to take the dumb beer back. Missouri state lawmaker charged with selling fake stem cell treatments and claiming they are a cure for COVID-19. Patricia Durges. <laughs> oh. A newly elected Missouri State Re Representative and Assistant Physician, I had to Google what that was, faces charges for allegedly running a fraud scheme in her three clinics and providing prescription drugs illegally, according to federal prosecutors. Prosecutors in the Western District of Missouri claim that Patricia, quote, Patricia, Ashton Durges, who operates three, three Ozark Valley medical clinics locations, sold what she falsely advertised as a stem cell treatment court documents site when she wrote on a Facebook post about her clinic's treatment as amazing treatment that stands to provide a potential cure for COVID-19 patients that is safe and natural. 
this is really strange too because she's a Republican and then you're getting into the stem cell stuff which, you, which usually they're not in favor of anyway and then she's throw another layer on that she's gonna pull here we go <laughs> she administered what? she actually administered a substance called amniotic fluid allograft to patients it's a substance that the University of Utah told investigators it sold to her for about $244 for one milliliter, according to the indictment. Authorities claim Durges knew the product did not contain any cells, including stem cells. In total, her patients paid her approximately $191,815 for amniotic fluid that did not contain stem cells. The document says she charged her patients $950 to $1,450 per milliliter. She paid $244. And it's just bullshit. Um, she's, but she's pleading not guilty. Um, disappointed to learn that the, the University of Utah said its product had clear usage instructions and was disappointed to learn that patients were allegedly misled. I mean, she charges, she faces eight wire fraud charges stemming from the sale of supposed stem cell treatment with two, uh, two charges of lying to investigators about dozen treat, uh, treatments. So conditionally, prosecutors charge her with 10 counts of prescribing medications to patients she wasn't treating directly. The pre these prescriptions, however, were not related to the fake stem cell treatments. Oh, so there's other shit too. She's entered a plea. The only, uh, the only thing that happened in this case is the return of a grand jury indictment, which she noted is a one-sided proceeding, of course. <laughs> she sold her company in her 50s to attend medical school in the Netherlands. And Tilly's graduating summa cum laude in 2014, according to her biography on the House of Representatives website. She holds an assistant physician's license in the state that was issued in 2017, according to Missouri Licensing Database. Missouri allows medical graduates to apply to become a phys assistant physician if they've passed steps one, two of the U.S. medical licensing examination, the indictment said, even if they were not accepted into a residency program. She obtained her medical degree from the Caribbean Medical University of Caraco in May 2014. That had to be online. Yes. <laughs> I don't believe that seeing the picture of this lady, I am judging. When people you can judge. Well, I am. I'm going to, let's just say I'll bet. I'll bet you the lady I'm looking at here, this lady did not go to Caraco. I think she went online. Degree. She was not accepted into a postgraduate residency program. She's not going to, she's still a doctor, still has clinics, and is still a state representative. Come on, Missouri. Let's, let's get this one moving faster, shall we? Let's move on to Texas. Texas did the funniest thing. I mean, again, I know this isn't funny. I know this is for safety. I know this is for the good of the state. But every once in a while, something's just funny even if it, it didn't cause any problems. <laughs> Unless someone believed it and then spent their day doing what they tell you to do. Even that's not a problem, if you had the time. Texas, the whole state, I need a drink of beer for this one. This is so great. I would have laughed my fucking ass off. They mistakenly sent out an emergency alert for the cursed Chucky doll. <laughs> Officials apologized for test malfunction after messages asking citizens to keep an eye out for the film villain was sent three times. <laughs> like an Amber Alert in a restaurant, you know, or when we used to do that, or when we would go out, or even at a show. Even at a show when I ask people nicely, can you guys turn off your cell phones, it, Amber Alerts still come through. So, yeah, I could be in Omaha or Cleveland or... Red in California, <coughs> and the whole theater goes off, but get a load of this. The Texas Public Safety Department raised a few eyebrows in the Lone Star State by repeatedly sending out an emergency alert asking citizens to keep an eye out for Chucky, the evil possessed doll from the horror movie series, Child, horror movie series Child's Play, whom it said was a suspect in a kidnapping. The message went out over the state's Amber Alert system, which is blasted to people's mobile phones, usually to help find a missing child. It was sent three times, which, by the way, I gotta see. It described the suspect as, this is great, being called Chucky, and listed him as a 28-year-old with red auburn hair, blue eyes, stood three foot one inches tall, and weighed 16 pounds. 
he was said to be wearing blue denim overalls with a multicolored striped long sleeve shirt and carrying a large knife, matching his appearance in the films. His race was listed as Other Doll. Oh. In the movies, which debuted in 1998, Chucky is a child's toy is possessed by a spirit of a dead killer. Um, <laughs> faced with numerous, numerous inquiries as to why an alert was being sent in, sent out sent out hunting for a cartoonish village from sla a slasher movie series, the department issued a statement saying the following, the alert is a result of a test malfunction. No, the alert is a result of a millennial with a funny sense of humor that's gonna get in a lot of trouble. How funny is it to describe him? Three foot one, 16 pounds, wearing overalls, blue denim, multicolored shirt, long, it's so funny. It's I know side. you shouldn't use that system for that. But every once in a while, it's funny. <laughs> Didn't hurt anybody. Um, we apologize for the confusion this may have caused. I guarantee you those millennials are laughing their ass off in the break room. Nobody's <laughs> apologizing. Nobody. They're going, you know, Bob, that was the funniest thing you've ever done in your life. And he's like, I know, I know. Don't I'll tell anybody. <laughs> oh, we apologize for the confusion this may have caused. Okay, if you were confused by that, if you really believe there was a doll that had been kidnapped, Murderous then that's on doll. you. As my brother-in-law Matt would say, that's on you. That's on you. If you didn't understand that some kid did this to be funny, and it was funny, um, they are diligently working to ensure this does not happen again. I'd like it to happen once a month. Yeah. It'd be in on the over, overpasses. <laughs> oh yeah, it's always on the highway too. All right, Look well, for I'm almost done. Here's some good news for chubby people. Who's gained weight in quarantine? You feeling bad about it? Don't. Not yet. Depends on your age. A new study, this is from Columbus, Ohio. A new study finds that having a dad bod isn't such a bad thing after all. Researchers from the Ohio State University say people who enter adulthood at a normal weight and start to pack on the pounds later in life actually live the longest. What? Wow. See how they hide this? I had to hunt deep and... No, I don't know. It was on like something I read all the time. Associate Professor of Sociology Hung Zhang and his team looked at two generations of Americans following the residents of one city in Massachusetts and their children for nearly 70 years. This is a 70-year experiment. Their findings reveal young adults with healthy body BMI, body mass index, who gradually become overweight but never obese have the greatest lifespans. There you go. Great. Good to know. These adults lived even longer than those who kept a normal BMI throughout their whole life. On the other hand, the dangers of obesity remain consistent throughout the study. Children who start adulthood already obese and continue to gain weight, well, right, because now you've gone into the fatty fat area. <laughs> now you're getting into my 600 pound life thing. The impact of weight gain on mortality is complex. It depends on both the timing and the magnitude of the weight gain. The main message is that for start, those who start out at a normal weight in early adulthood and gain a modest amount through life and entering the overweight category in later adulthood can actually increase the probability of, of survival. And then it goes on. The right weight gain can also lead to a long can lead to a longer life. Um, so they're saying if you gain a few pounds as you age, it's probably going to help you if you get sick because at least you got a little weight on you. Yeah. Like yeah, I had an aunt that was way too skinny and just couldn't battle the shit that you get have to battle when you're old. Um, so there you go. If you gain a little weight, if you're older, you can't be young. You can't be one of my who generation Zers. If you, do I have any? Are there any young people listening? I hope so. Because I really do get a kick out of... They're funny. They are very funny. And they have a very different attitude about a lot of shit. And, and I, I, I'm shocked usually at it. Usually shocked, amused, and a little bit jealous. Because I just don't... I don't, I don't have any to think like that. Okay, this is crazy. This is crazy. Jimmy Hoffa update. What? It's a mystery. So mystery, I'd like to end with a mystery if I can. Right. And my dad, as a workman's comp lawyer, worked with his daughter in the St. Louis court system. Jimmy Hoffa's daughter moved from Detroit to St. Louis, so I always thought that was super cool that he knew um, his daughter. And I said, did you ask her? Where do you think your dad's at? Um, Wait, his daughter was a lawyer? I think she was a judge. What? I think she was a judge. Wow. Well, she worked in the deployment of, uh, on a uh, workman's compensation division. I don't know. Wow. I don't know what she did down there, but he saw her all the time. Nobody knows. <laughs> and he said they just didn't, he, he said he did ask her eventually. He said, I didn't want to ask her right out of the gate and be one of those people. 
I wanted to get to know her and stuff and be friends. And then he's like, do you know, do you ever, she's like, well, we never really talked about it. We just, you know, she said they just knew it was a bad thing and probably not going to figure it out. But guess what? So for you, if there's Generation Zers or even some millennials who probably don't know, that movie with uh, Jack, Nic if you want to watch the uh, Jack Nicholson plays Jimmy Hoffa is great. That's a great one. Um, I don't, I think it was just called Hoffa. Teamster Union boss James Hoffa vanished in 1975 and his death has never been solved. When you see the movie, take note of the Michigan diner they pulled up to. Every time I see that diner in that movie, I get hungry. It looks so good. It just looks like a Midwest diner that would have everything. Mm -hmm. Like breakfast, a tuna sandwich. It just looks like, and Mary said he didn't, I don't think he ate properly before they got him. <laughs> Last Especially time. if that could be your last meal. He disappeared after arranging a meeting with the mafia in Detroit. Now Fox Nation, I don't really know what that is. Say it may have found where he was secretly buried. It is in a landfill. You ready for this? Landfill site in New Jersey that was formerly owned by mobsters. <sighs> Maybe. But that means they got to drive him all the way from Michigan back to Jersey in the trunk of a car. Kind of convenient, too. Well... The son of one of the mobsters claims Hoffa was stuffed in a steel barrel, put in the ground beneath other barrels. Fox Nation brought in radar detecting stuff, and they do detect. They detected, they detected curved metal shapes beneath the ground that could be the barrels. Frank the Irishman, Sheeran, claimed it was him who killed Hoffa. You don't believe that when you see the movies, The Irishman. I don't believe that he did it. I think he wanted people to think he did it, but he didn't seem like the guy to me that, from the movies. I mean, I don't know enough about this I'm not a cop but the way they present it I don't think it was Frank Philip Moscato Jr. whose father worked for mobster Philip brother Moscato Sr. see that <laughs> has previously claimed it was hitman Salvatore Sally Bugs those are in quotes like baby shoe <laughs> <laughs> baby shoe Madigan is being accused of shooting mobster James Hoffa outside of a diner <laughs> And we're all to try. Um, Moscato also agrees with Capola that the landfill is where Hoffa is buried. He may be in a steel drum. Uh, it's, it's now owned by the New Jersey Department of Transportation and is used by a local waste management company to store unused dumpsters. Hmm. Yeah. They visited it. They had their radar deals. They found... Um, metal in the ground that would be consistent with the drums they described. Now the show's producers, so this Fox Nation, I don't know if that's the same as Fox. I don't know. Now the show's producers say they're waiting for law enforcement to intervene to dig up the site. Coppola does not name Hoffa's killer, but Philip Moscato Jr., whose father was mobster Philip, uh, previously came to... Oh, we already read that part. That was on the first page. Um, uh, Moscato told Fox Nation that Coppola's claims about the body, where the body is, are right. The show also brought in radar. Uh, the team did not dig anything up, but they said that, that they know it's been, they know there's shit down there. He did not give details of how his father came to be involved, um, but he told the show that he pushed Hoffa's body in the steel drum. So they did. They took the body, if we're to believe it. Fox Nation is the streaming version of Fox News. Fox Nation is the streaming version of Fox News? Yeah. So they have documentaries and stuff. Oh, they have documentaries? Mm -hmm. Huh. Okay. But it aligns with their demographic. It aligns with their demographic. Yeah. Meaning, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but I mean, why do they care about Jimmy Hoffa? That's weird. This is like another Geraldo thing where it's all bullshit. Possibly. And then the guy said that his father pushed Hoffa's body into the steel drum. He couldn't get the legs to bend. Don't take this the wrong way. He had a lot of respect for Hoffa, but he said he couldn't get the little fat man and the barrel feet first. So they put him in head first and then pushed the cover on top of him. And then they buried him. His father then buried him in a spot, meaning Hoffa, where he thought the ground would not be disturbed. It was right next to that spot that the government did, did dig up in the 80s. Huh. Known as a federal Superfund site, it was cleared out in the 1980s by the U.S. Department of Environmental Protection, which removed barrels filled with toxic waste. My father decided to change location because he felt he couldn't, he didn't know if somebody was watching. The place was always under surveillance. After I came in the next day, the hole was filled. Coppola said he had finally decided to come forward because most people 
Most of the people involved were dead. He told Fox Nation that his father, who died in 2008, had always been haunted by his role in the killing. He said he was very upset his whole life over it, that he had to get put in that position. But, you know, if you don't do it, then they do it to you. I think I'm doing the right thing, my, fa my father said. I want this man to go home to his family. He needs to go back home. He was a great, good man, and my father respected him. Hoffa intended to testify before the U.S. Senate investigation panel known as the Church Committee about mafia involvement in U.S. backplots to assassinate Fidel Castro before his death. The FBI had long suspected Hoffa fell victim to a mob hit with his death being orchestrated by the highest echelons of organized crime. Though Hoffa was officially declared in 1982, seven years after his disappearance, no remains have ever been found. They need speculation about his final resting place as well as the conspiracy theories about who carried it out, who ordered it, and the apparent whacking. He became the president of the International Brotherhood of Teamsters and one of the largest labor unions in the world in 1957. So, I don't know. I'd be interested to see if they dig it up. You know? Is Jim, did they drive him all the way back to Jersey in the trunk of a car? That's, I don't know, that's kind of gross. I would think you could do the steel drum thing anywhere in Detroit at that time. Yeah. Not anywhere, but I mean, there's plenty of places, <laughs> not like, not like in, you know, Henry Ford's front yard. Um, but it seems like there would be a lot of, you know, like industrial places in Detroit where you could have taken a steel drum. Okay, well, we'll see. So that's about it, termites. Went a little long today, but we learned things, right? Keep your YouTube comments coming. Oh, yeah, subscribe. I always say that. And I, oh... The Missouri article was sent to me um, by somebody on Twitter, and I wanted to say her name, and I, I forgot. I'll find it for next week, but I want to thank her. I wrote it on something, too. God darn it. Um, it's a lady from Ohio, M N. I don't know what her Twitter handle was, and I couldn't really tell her name, but she's a nurse from Ohio. Very nice to send me that Missouri article, because I would not have seen that. Hold on. This was a really funny one. Sometimes you guys post shit that makes me laugh, and I printed it out. So this is from David. David wrote this on uh, YouTube about the podcast. Dear Kathleen, my husband and I need you to know that your podcast has turned into one of our favorite things. R.I.P. Christopher Plummer. <laughs> Thanks for throwing that in, David. Shout it, out. It did make me sad. 91 years old. And then I read he was kind of a crazy person. But boy, was he the most handsome person ever in The Sound of Music. And when he goes, my fellow Austrians, I may not be seeing you. For a very long time. You just want to start crying. And then he says something in there to one of the Nazis where he goes, Oh, did I offend you? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I meant to insult you. <laughs> Mic drop. The only danger is that we both feel like we are having a 90-minute conversation with you over beers. Well, you are. With you every week. So when we do randomly see you in person, we will act like we are friends. And, re and really, we will just be crazy weirdos. <laughs> And I know this isn't, in the, isn't the facial book, and this comment is too long. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> I really want, but see, the fact that he acknowledged it negates it. Now, it's funny. I really wanted to tweet you by the last time, but, but the last time I tweeted, it was to Richard Simmons' pre-disappearance. I do know that he disappeared. That is so strange. I, I wonder, too, does somebody have him? Is this like a Howard Hughes deal? Who's keeping Richard? And then he goes, I'm not being kept. Yeah, you are. Wink. 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 Yeah. Pre-disappearance, and he tweeted me back, so I feel like I won at Twitter, and if I tweet you and you don't tweet, tweet back, I will be lost at Twitter. It will be like I lost at Twitter. So here we are. Please never stop the podcast, even when you are not unemployed. I'm going to try to keep doing it. It's going to be hard, but I'm going to try. We will even listen to the ads. XO, P.S. I had never seen the video version, and I think it's important that you know it made me laugh just seeing you surrounded by the queens. <laughs> the court! Thank you, David. That made me laugh. Tweeted Richard Simmons pre-disappearance. And nobody's talking about that. Did they find him? I got to Google it. I don't know the latest. Last I heard, he was still... It's, it's weird. You know, he's a social person. Uh, he's a very social animal. Ron is not. What? Ron, Ron agrees. Yeah. Lou wants to know, where's Richard Simmons? It's a good question. <laughs> no, Lou. We're going to find him. <laughs> Ron should talk. It's a shame Ron doesn't talk. All right, termites. This is Mama Termite going down to watch the Super Bowl. Can Tom Brady do it? So, um, so, um, you know, how many people in Boston want to kill themselves today? I just want to know. 
How many of you are so drunk going, I, I can't believe they did it. They traded Tommy. I told you. And Gronk. Look, they're back again in the wrong goddamn uniform. It's ridiculous. So stupid. You blame Belichick? Do you blame the owners? They might get Carson Wentz. <laughs> Carson Wentz. Have fun. Have fun with that. <laughs> Poor Lewis. He's going to get the re his little Washington football clubs to be stuck with Alex Smith again. He's hobbling around on this leg that's been mangled 17th. And I give the guy, you know, God love you. I wouldn't go through all that to do that. But it's not right. No. Anyway. Um, that's it. St. Louis doesn't have a team, so I just bet on players. And I bet Kansas City because it is the Chiefs and it is my home state. Um, that's it, termites. So have fun. Be good termites. Be worthy termites. Be nice to each other. All right, termites. Um, some people are still saying, why are you calling us termites? I will go back to and I will repeat it as many times as necessary because whenever Ron White, this man, stays at my house, He's six foot two, 230 pounds, and he always comes out in pajama pants and a funny t-shirt and just goes, I just wanted to say, night night termite. And it makes me smile. <laughs> Every time it makes me smile. I guess because he's large and old and looks like Nick Nolte. Adorable. It. Adorable. Very handsome. Good hair. Um, it's just funny. So what's that's the, it. What's the book? What's the book? Yeah. What are you reading? What book am I reading? For story time. Oh, for story time. Yeah, I forgot. So I've decided, and it's going to start this week, Liberace. We're going to get off the Southern thing, the country music thing for a while. The George Jones book, I started reading it. It is bananas good. <laughs> that guy, that guy is a special. I didn't know you could get away with the shit George Jones got away with. I mean, I'd have to be a lot more famous than myself, but shoo, buddy. <laughs> um, but we've done enough of that for a little bit. So we're going to go to Wisconsin because that's where Liberace's from. So if you'd like to join on Storytime, if you hear the podcast, um, Storytime is, is just on YouTube. It's not like a thing I do anywhere else. It's just on YouTube. For children. I don't. It's, it's what I do for older, borderline, educated alcoholics, my friends, my termites. <laughs> Ron is the grand termite. I am mama termite. And I read stories because you know why I really did it? There used to be a nun on TV when I was on the road, like when there were only like 50 channels and she wore a brown uh, habit and I don't, my mom would know. I don't know what order of nuns that is that wears brown instead of black. And she was ancient. She was like 199 and she would just talk and read. And it wasn't even like the Bible, I don't think. I don't know. I would say the Missalette as a Catholic. I don't know what she was reading. Something religious. But it, she was mesmerizing, and I don't think I'm mesmerizing, but I just liked coming home, even if I had had 10 beers. If the nun was on, I just wanted to see her. Like, she was calming. It was very calming. It was like, so today, we're going to talk about getting closer to Jesus. All right. Okay. Let me get some wine. Let's do let me see if there's any beer in the mini fridge of a, of, of a Motel 6. <laughs> nope. Oh, look, I brought one home in my backpack. Let's talk about our relationship with the saints. Okay. I just really, so I thought story time would be fun. And uh, some of the books I read, I sit there and go, holy shit. And there's nobody to say holy shit to. So I'm saying it to you guys. I figured it'd be fun to read them out loud. So we're going to do Liberace starting this week. The fact that he's from Wisconsin, that already makes it funny to me. <laughs> Grab a spotted cow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think Liberace ever had a spotted cow in his life. I don't see it. Not with champagne and candelabras. There's no room for spotted cow. That is the drink of peasants. Me being one of them. All right, termites. That's it. I'm going to sign off with a what? Night, night, termites.